The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton. Chapter 24. A most exciting time. As the children stood gloomily outside Silky's house, a voice called to them from further down. Is that you, what's his name? Any news of our missing friends? That's the angry pixie. Let's go down and talk to him, said Joe. The angry pixie was looking very, very miserable. I can't understand all this mystery, he said. I saw Silky and the others a few days ago, and then they suddenly disappear like smoke without a cry or a yell. Oh, it's very funny. Well, we've just been up to the land of tempers, said Franny, but they're not there. Oh, I thought of going up there to see, said the angry pixie, but I was so afraid I'd lose my temper and have to stay there forever. Oh, you know what a temper I've got. Yes, said Joe. You certainly mustn't even dream of going up there. You definitely never come back. They sat there, looking at one another and and wondering what to do. And then they all pricked up their ears. They could hear a very peculiar noise. Boom, 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 knock, knock, knock. Boom, boom, boom. Whatever's that? said Franny, looking all around. And, and where's it coming from? Oh, I can't imagine, said the angry pixie. I keep on hearing it. I heard it yesterday and last night and this morning. It just goes on and on and on. Everyone listened. The noise stopped and then went on again. Boom, 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 knock, knock, knock. Where does it come from, asked Beth? Oh, I reckon that comes from inside the tree, said What's-His-Name, listening hard. Hmm, yes, I'm sure of that. Well, do you think, do you, do you possibly think that, that it might, that it might be Silky and the others, somewhere inside the tree, said Franny suddenly. Boom, 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 knock, 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 there it was again. Do you know, I believe... Franny might be right, said Joe. What's his name, leaned in? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, so do I. I believe Franny might be right. Oh, I think, I think maybe actually that she could be right. And Silky and Moonface and Saucepan are prisoners inside the slippery slip. Oh, Stampalot must have pushed them down there and... And then stuffed up the hole with all those things, said What's-His-Name. But, well, wouldn't they have shot out the trap door at the bottom, asked Rick. Well, come on then, look, we'll go down and open it and see if anything has been put there to stuff that up too, said Joe. Come on, everyone. So they all went down the tree to where the trap door at the bottom of the faraway tree was. Joe opened it. He looked inside and then gave a shout. This end is all stuffed up too. These two horrible people from the land of tempers have got Silky and the others in there. I'm sure of it. Look, look, there's all kinds of things stuffed in here. Oh, the poor things can't get up or down. They're trapped. Right. Um, well, let's pull everything out and set them free, said Rick. And he tugged at a great ball of moss. But it wouldn't move. Everyone had a turn, tugging and pulling, but it was no use at all. Not a thing would move. Oh, they've stuffed everything in and they've put a spell on it to make sure it stays where it is, said What's-His-Name at last. Oh, oh, it's no good. We'll never be able to move a thing. Oh, look, look, there's Lady Yellow Round coming back from her shopping. Well... We'll just see if we can make her do something about this, shall we? But that wasn't any good either. Lady Yellowround pretended she didn't know anything about the stopped up hole. What's the good of shouting at me and asking me something I don't know anything about? She asked. You go and ask old Stampalot. 
He'll tell you what you want to know. No, he won't, said Joe. He's just as big a fibber as you are. Anyway, no one wanted to see Stampalot again. He was such a bad-tempered person. Oh, they all climbed back to the angry pixie's house and oh, sat down and looked gloomily at each other. Can't get in at the top of the slippery slip and can't get in at the bottom, said Joe. How in the world can we rescue poor Silky and the others? Oh, it's simply dreadful. Oh, and they won't have eaten. Oh, they'll be starving, said Franny, beginning to cry. Oh, Joe, do think of something, please. But nobody could think of anything at all. It was only when the woodpecker flew by to go to his hole in the tree that suddenly an idea came. And then Joe jumped up with his eyes shining. I know, I know, he cried. Let's ask the woodpecker to help us. But how could a bird help? asked Rick. Well, a woodpecker pecks holes in wood to make his nest, said Joe. I've seen them pecking hard with their strong beaks and they make a kind of drumming noise and can peck out quite a big hole in no time. If we ask him, I'm sure that the woodpecker could peck a hole in, well, maybe at the back of this room. Well, hang on, yes, we could ask him to peck a hole at the back of this room and then it would go right into the slippery slip and, and then we could pull Silky and Moonface and Saucepan through the hole. Oh, that really does sound like a marvellous idea, said Franny Beaming. Let's call him now. So they all went outside onto a big branch of the faraway tree and called to the woodpecker. Woodpecker, come here a minute. The woodpecker stared round in surprise. He was cleaning his wing feathers by running each one carefully through his beak. He was a lovely bird with a bright red splashed head. He spread his wings out and flew down. What's the matter? he asked. Joe told him. The bird listened with his head on one side and his bright eyes shining. Do you think you could possibly help us to rescue Silky and the others by pecking a hole at the back of the angry pixie's house? Asked Joe when he came to the end of his story. Well, because we've well, got such a strong beak. Yes, I know I have, said the woodpecker. The only thing is I generally only peck rotten wood. It's much easier to pick away, you know, when the wood is rotten uh, and old because it just falls to pieces. But when the wood is good and it's growing wood like the trunk of the faraway tree, well, that's very different. That's a very, very hard indeed. It would take me simply ages to peck a large hole through that. Oh, oh dear, sighed Joe. I'm so disappointed. We daren't let Silk and the others stay in the slippery slip too long in case they starve. There's nothing to eat down there, you know. Whatever are we going to do? Everybody thought hard. It was the woodpecker who had an idea first. I know, he said. I could fetch my cousins who live in the enchanted wood in another tree. And maybe if there were three or four of us all pecking hard together, we could make a good hole quite quickly. I know I couldn't make one by myself without taking two or three days. But a lot of us working together might do it easily. Oh, good, cried everyone. Go get your cousins. There's a dear. Oh, hurry. The woodpecker flew off and everyone waited impatiently. They heard the noise from the inside of the tree again. Boom, boom, boom. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, poor thing, said Beth, tears in her eyes. It must be so dreadful inside in the dark. Oh, they've got nothing to eat, nothing to drink, and they're stuck inside the middle of a tree. Oh, my gosh. After about ten minutes, the woodpecker came back. And with him... He bought not one, not two, not three, not four, but five other woodpeckers. They were all beautiful with bright red splashed heads and strong, strong looking 
beaks. Oh, splendid, cried Joe. And he took them all to the angry pixie's little house. Now, peck away at the back here. The six birds stood in a row and began to peck as close to one another as they could. Peck, 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 peck. They pecked so hard and so fast that they made a curious drumming sound that echoed through the little house. They pecked hard for about an hour and then stopped for a rest. Joe pressed close to see how they were getting on. Oh, to his joy, he saw that a small hole had been pecked right into the wall of the slippery slip. Oh, he asked the angry pixie for a torch and shone it through the hole. Yes, there was no doubt about it. The woodpeckers had gone right through the tree trunk just there. Oh, now you've only got to make the hole bigger, said Joe. Oh, that's all you've got to do. Just make it bigger, big enough so that we can get them out, cried Joe happily. Oh, peck away, woodpeckers, peck away. You're doing marvellously. And that is the end of that chapter. Oh, my gosh. Well, did you guess that's where they were? Could you have even thought that Silky and Moonface and Saucepan were all trapped inside the tree? I certainly didn't guess that. Oh, my gosh. And to have a spell put on all the things so that nothing can be taken out the bottom and nothing taken out the top. Thank goodness Joe had that idea. Thank goodness indeed. So the woodpeckers are pecking away. How do you think Silky and Moonface and Saucepan are feeling right now? How do you think they're feeling in that tree? And what do you think will happen if the woodpeckers manage to get them out? What do you think will be the first thing they'll want to do when they get out? And what do you think they're going to want to do straight after that? Well, let's hope that the woodpeckers carry on pecking away and we will find them again and find out what happens in the next chapter tomorrow. Bye-bye.